Hey, it's Matt from Tradesman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through Google Ads keywords. I'm going to walk you through how to find high converting, high buying intent keywords that will produce sales and leads inside of your Google Ads account so you can have a lot of success inside Google Ads. Now, first off, Google Ads keywords really break down into two parts. One is finding high buying intent keywords, and two is the actual optimization process. If we have one without the other, chances are you're not going to have success inside Google Ads, so we need both of them. Now, first, First off, what are high buying intent keywords? And high buying intent keywords are keywords that show buying intent, but high buying intent keywords generally have a phrase after the actual target keyword we're going after. So say we're a fencing company, we want to go after fencing installation. And the keywords we're actually going to target are going to be fencing installation companies near me, stuff like this that, yes, it has fencing in it, which is the actual service we sell, but it also has the high buying intent behind it. It has installation, it has company, it has services near me. These all show indications that the individual is looking to actually purchase your product. Now, how do we go about actually finding these high buying intent keywords inside Google Ads? And what we have to do is actually come over here to the tools and settings button inside Google Ads. We're going to come over here to the actual keyword planner here we're going to open this up in a new tab just so it's easier for you guys to see and then what we're going to do is hit discover new keywords now this will pop up and it's important to geo modify this right off the bat as you can see down here it says Canada we need this set to the location we're going to be advertising in. if we don't we're not going to get accurate data and that's going to lead to a lot of issues later on so please make sure to actually go in and geo modify this for your location that you will be advertising in. so for me I'm going to type in Hamilton here uh, Hamilton, I can't spell today, but that's okay. Uh, we'll do Toronto, Ontario, and these are all cities here in Canada, if you didn't know, Mississauga. And again, just go through here, add all the cities you'll be advertising in. That way we have an actual very good representation of the search volume and the actual cost per click that we will be expecting for our account. So now that we have this set up, all we have to do is hit save and we are good to go. We have successfully geo-modified this, so now we actually have to type in the keywords we want to go after. So right off the bat, you'll have some indication. You'll kind of know intuitively what keywords we kind of want to go after, but we don't know all the actual keywords. So it's important to guess a little bit, but once we have a few keywords that we know people are actually going to go after, like pool installation, fencing installation, HVAC installation, like these are high buying intent keywords. We all know that. But if we actually type these into Google, Google's going to give us a whole bunch more keywords that we can then go after, build out their own ad groups, and then hopefully successfully target later on. So I'm going to put in pool installation. I'll do fiberglass pool installation. I, again, fiberglass pool installation, not correct but that's okay. Fiberglass pool installation. We'll do vinyl pool installation. Cool. And then we'll hit get results. Normally, if you add anywhere from three to five keywords, you should be all right. Now, as we can see here, we have several different columns. And really, the most important columns that you have to look at are the actual keywords themselves and then the average monthly search volume. When it comes to bidding strategy, bid range really matters, and you should be taking this into consideration when setting a maximum cost per click if you're using maximize clicks bid strategy. However, if you want to get more into detail about the actual bid strategies we use inside Google, just type in maximize clicks. I'm not sure what video it actually is. There's, we have a whole bunch. Type in target CPA or maximize clicks. Something will pop up. I think even in our Google ads, colony ads, our normal tutorials, that will show you what bidding strategies we use if you're interested in actually learning about top of page and low range and high range. That will allow you to successfully set a maximum cost per click. But we're here to learn about high buying intent keywords and how to find them. So I'm going to stick to this for this video. But again, if you want to find that, it's in one of our tutorials. It's in all of our tutorials, I should say. But what's important here is the keyword and the average monthly searches. So to start off, I recommend having an average monthly search volume of at least 1,000 to 10,000. This is pool installation here in Canada in a couple cities. It's not very high because it's winter here. So that explains why our average monthly searches are quite low. But I would recommend having several keywords with at least 1,000 to 10,000 searches a month. That should give you enough search volume to get impressions, to get searches, and run a successful campaign for a budget of anywhere between 1,000 to 10,000 a month, depending on, again, what you're selling and the actual cost per click. So as we scroll down here, we can see that we have a whole bunch of different keywords, and some of them are good, some of them not so much. And what I would recommend doing right away is actually creating a Google Sheets or an Excel file or whatever it is, and adding very tightly themed keywords together. So in this A column, B column, and C column, they're all going to be different ad groups, so they're all going to have different ad copies. So 
If we see pool installation, this shows high buying intent. If we see pool installation near me, high buying intent. I would add pool installation near me into the pool installation ad group. And all of these keywords, I would just add to their own ad group so they all have their own relevant ad copy. And the way I go about actually determining if ad copy is relevant or not is to actually just think from a person's perspective. Like if I typed in pool installation here and your ad popped up for pool installation, and it said, looking for pool installation, get a free quote. Now that would make sense. If I typed in pool installation and then vinyl pool installation popped up with an ad, that doesn't make as much sense. And we wanna be as relevant as possible. So we have as high as click-through rate as possible. This helps with quality score, getting a lower cost per click, getting more leads. So we really wanna make our ads as closely related to our keywords as possible. That way we just have more success in our Google Ads account. So go into this, build out an ad group that is very closely related. So let's take a few more examples. We have vinyl pool installation and let's see fiberglass pool cost we could put that into do we already have that there we already have fiberglass pool cost there um in-ground pool so this could be its own ad group so we didn't even do in-ground pool so we'll put in-ground pools let's just i'll get rid of prices and then i'll add that below in-ground pool prices and as you can see here all the keywords we're taking into consideration all have search volume if these keywords don't have any search volume there's not really any reason to go after them so i wouldn't add them to our account swimming pool installation that can go into our pool installation ad group that is clearly very tightly themed with the actual pool installation keyword so that's fine it can go in there swimming pool installers you could maybe get away with that you could put pool installers into its own ad group if you really wanted to pool installation cost do we have that no we don't so we can put that in there and as you can see all of these keywords have some sort of indication of buying intent. They have pool installation, they have you know above ground swimming pool installation, they have costs, they have prices, they have get a quote. They have all different indications that someone is actually looking to purchase your product. And that's what we want with these high buying intent keywords. We don't wanna go after just vague keywords like pools because pools could mean anything. Pools could mean I'm looking up images of pools. I'm looking for nearby pools I can go swimming in. There's so many things that you can pop up for and waste ad spend, which is not what we wanna do. We wanna be as precise as possible with these keywords. And we're able to do that by looking through these high buying intent keywords, making sure they have installation, services, costs, quotes, things like this that really indicate to us, the advertiser, that yes, this person on the other side of the screen is actually looking to purchase your product or service and actually go through with a business deal with you. Because if you don't add these keyword modifiers, you're just shooting in the dark. Like maybe this person who's looking for pools might convert and they might not. More than likely, they're not going to convert because they're just looking for a very vague term and the conversion rate is going to be really low for you. The cost per lead could be low, but the issue there is how much time do we actually want to waste going after all all these very vague keywords that a lot of these people who are calling us are probably not looking for our services. They're probably just looking around for pools or other things that they really aren't in the market to actually buy. And we don't want to waste the business owner's time. We want to send them high quality leads. And the best way of doing that again here is to make sure all of your keywords you're targeting have some type of modifier on them that signal buying intent. So installation, services, companies, uh, quotes, prices, things that again, show the person on the other side of the screen is interested in our product. So as we can go through here, pool cost, I think pool cost could go into the actual pool installation there. Maybe we could put that on its own ad group. It really depends there. Fiberglass pool cost, we already added that. A great thing to do to stop wasted ad spend is to put these into your negatives right away before you even start running your actual ads. And that's because this clearly has search volume. And if we're running phrase match, especially if we're running broad match too, where these keyword types are very lenient, you're gonna be popping up for these unrelated keywords that you don't wanna pop up, especially if it's services you don't offer, you're gonna waste a lot of ad spend there. And it's just not something you wanna target. So I would add those to your negatives right away so you don't pop up for them. And especially since they have search volume, we know that if we don't put these in, there's a chance we will pop up for them. So it's a good thing to actually put those into your negatives so you don't appear for them and your ads don't show for them. Now, one thing I would, mention is the actual ad groups. I would build these out and every single ad group, as you can see here, will have a different amount of keywords in them. Just again, make sure there's search volume behind them, make sure there's buying intent behind them and make sure they're closely related. That's what I would recommend. And if you follow those steps, chances are you will have a very successful account just based off these keywords. 
Now, the next important thing, once we find the actual keywords that we want to go after, is making sure that we are optimizing these keywords. Now, keyword optimization is a task on its own, and it really takes a decent amount of understanding of Google Ads to do it well. So I'm going to come back over here to our campaign, and I'm going to just give you a quick breakdown of what we do to optimize our Google Ads accounts. So we've clicked on pool installation here, and I'm going to click on keywords. And when we come down, we can see vinyl pools, we can see swimming pool fiberglass, we can see swimming pool contractors near me. Now, some of these are good, some of these are bad, but the point I'm going to make here is once we have about 10 clicks on every single keyword here, these are in broad match, you might be a little bit more lenient, same as phrase match. I generally recommend starting every single campaign off in exact match, especially if you're new, that way you're not wasting ad spend on irrelevant keywords. You're not gonna have to put in a whole bunch of negatives. That will save you a lot of time, especially if you're new to this, you're not gonna do, uh, generally go after keywords you don't want to go after. But once we have 10 clicks for a keyword, all we have to do is come over to our cost per lead and the amount of conversion. So we wanna look at conversion rate, we wanna look at conversions, and we wanna look at cost per lead. If we have zero conversions after 10 clicks, this is a problem. This means this keyword is not going to convert very well, and chances are it's gonna be very expensive. So what I would do, for example, if pool, uh, vinyl pools was not converting, I would just come in here, hit the green button, and then hit pause, so we're no longer showing our ads for this keyword. Now, if it does have a conversion or more, that means we have a conversion rate of 10%. I like to go with at least 20% normally. Sometimes certain accounts require you to just have lower conversion rates depending on search volume issues there's a whole bunch of other things to take into consideration if you have one conversion out of 10 and the cost per lead if we come across here where is our cost per lead here cost per conversion I missed it if we have a cost per conversion that we're happy with so say we're willing to spend $50 a lead and this is $25 I would say keep this keyword running and allow it to build up more data and over time you're going to see whether or not this keyword will stay profitable but it really comes down to the cost per conversion and the actual buying intent behind the keyword. So if we know this is a high buying intent keyword, it shows people are actually interested in our services and we're getting a cost per conversion that we're happy with. You should keep this keyword on and allow it to run inside your Google ads account. Now, a quick word from today's video sponsor. If you're looking to build Google ads campaigns lightning fast and I'm talking in under 15 minutes, you got to check out our Google ads automatic campaign builder here. It's absolutely awesome for anyone who is looking to essentially plug and play any campaign. We use it for every single one of our Google ads campaigns. It saves us so much time. And really, if you're going to be building more than one campaign inside Google ads, it is really worth the money because it's just going to save you hours of time. You're not going to have to copy and paste campaigns. It comes with headlines. It comes with descriptions. It makes your life so much easier. And it really is a tool we absolutely cherish here at Tradesman Digital Marketing. It is awesome. And I'm very glad we built it. And if you're looking to save a whole bunch of time inside Google Ads, I would highly recommend getting this product. If you're interested in it, by the way, the link is down below in our little link tree link thing there. Check it out. It's awesome. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about Google Ads keywords, the optimization process, how to find high buying intent keywords, Again, there's a little intuition there at the beginning, but once you actually start optimizing your keywords inside Google Ads, this process becomes a lot easier. And an important note to make is just because you have a high buying intent keyword in one account and then you transfer it over to another account does not mean that same keyword is going to be successful because the locations change, the actual competition in the account changes. There's so much stuff that changes in the account that just because you found a high buying intent keyword that works in one account doesn't mean it will work in another account. So optimization is that second piece of the puzzle you need to apply to every single ads account to make sure you have success long term for either yourself or the client you're managing this account for. So if you have any comments questions or concerns leave it down in the comment section down below i'd be happy to answer it also check out our discord server it's absolutely awesome we have a nice little google ads community going on there everyone inside of it's really cool i really like the discord server i think it's awesome again the link is down below for that other than that though you guys have a wonderful day and take care